Welcome to the Campus Fellowship Podcast. This is an episode where we seek to highlight for you an interview with a student and their testimony that we think will be a blessing to your life. My name is Jacob Bennett. I serve as the executive director of the Campus Fellowship Network, which exists to equip local churches to implement and sustain dynamic college ministries whose students worship God and change the world. Uh, with us today, we have Mel. Mel's doing the video as usual on the podcast, and she's running the mixer. And also with us today is Elena. Elena, help me. Is it Sassman? Yeah. Just it's making Sassman. sure. Okay, yeah. Elena Sassman uh, from Iowa State. Oh. What would you rather do? Just a minute or Olympics? Olympics. I guess I'll do the Olympics since it's so topical. Okay. Right now. Did you watch the Olympics? We're just going to talk about the Olympics. No, okay. That's all we're going to do. Okay. So you, you kind of maybe lucked out a little bit on this. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what was your favorite sport to watch? Oh, um, I would say I really liked, oh, I can't, I can't remember what sport she did, but I watched the interview with one of the girls and she was just like giving all glory to Christ. What's your favorite sport to watch during the Olympics? I really like skiing. Skiing? I, yeah, I'm a big skier. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm You're a winter Olympics girl. <laughs> Just to clarify. Not to, yes. <laughs> Those are things like water skiing was oh, on. Yeah, I don't no. think water skiing is actually an Olympic sport, no. but skiing, sweet. So downhill, mm-hmm. um, like speed slalom or like moguls or I all think of it. the speed skiing is really interesting to me. Those people are flying. It's okay. crazy. Cool. All right, well, Elena, let's jump right into it then. Um, Tell us about your testimony. How did you come to know Christ? Yeah, that is a great question. Okay, Um, I guess I'll jump right into it. So I was born in Dubuque, Iowa, to two parents, Mm -hmm. (laughs) obviously. And um, my parents, and then we, I was born in Dubuque, and then we were in Dyersville. Not super important, but that's what happened. And then they got divorced when I was around six years old and I have a younger sister so what happened with that it was it was pretty chaotic and so we ended up moving to Boone Iowa so that my mom could be closer to her parents Mm -hmm. so that's kind of what happened with that and that was just kind of all I knew in life just starting out is I was like this is like marriage doesn't really mean anything to me Mm. I guess was pretty like a pretty clear point because I was just like well all marriages is it's this legal status basically before the government and Mm -hmm. as soon as you're kind of done with that it's like that is what it is you get divorced and then you move on to greater and better things in life obviously (laughs) but as we know like I literally didn't know that divorce was like against the bible until I came to college and then when I was told that, I was like, no, no, no way. I was like, really? I, w- I was just like, I was literally floored and shocked. Yeah. And yet yeah. I, I called myself a Christian. Like mm. I, like if anyone asked, I was like, I'm Christian for sure. Like 100%. God and I are so tight. But then <laughs> I didn't read the Bible. <laughs> I didn't know what the Bible said. Yeah. I had, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. But what, what happened was, so we moved to Boone And, um, I don't know. I, now that I do know Christ, I can definitely reflect back on that more and see that, like, marriage is such a beautiful thing, which you never would have heard me say, like, ever, like, in Mm -hmm. high school or anything. I was just like, it's, it's quite useless, in fact, Mm. is actually, Mm -hmm. like, my thoughts on it, like, I I really didn't see a point to it even because I was like, why trap yourself with someone that you'll get tired of like in a couple of years? Like that doesn't make sense unless you want tax benefits or something like that's, Ah, that was marriage in my mind. It was a very practical view. Yeah, exactly. The like, what other purpose would it be for? And then when I, I actually ended up going to my parents, like God worked like in this, like as I was thinking about like this podcast, like yesterday and today, I was like, I I was reflecting on my life. I was like, wow, like God was working. Like even when I didn't know God, like God knew me and he Mm -hmm. was like working in my life. And so my parents, not because they love Christ and not because they know Christ, but they would still call themselves Christian, but they were like, 
we're going to send these girls to this private school, this private Christian school, because we want them, like, their version of happiness was you need to make money. You need to make money and you need to get a good job because Mm. they're they're public servants. And so they were Uh like, this is how you be happy in life. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense because we didn't, I guess I just didn't grow up with a lot or anything. So I was like, oh, like when I have a lot, I'll be happy. And so Mm. we ended up going to that school and there is when I first encountered Christ and the gospel because one of my teachers took me aside and she was like, Elena, like Jesus loves you. And I had a lot of, <laughs> I had a lot of problems at the time, but like, just <laughs> like, and I got, I was, she told me that cause I was taken out of the classroom mm. because I was being not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I got taken out of the classroom and she was like, she literally just took me by the shoulders and looked me in the eye. And she was like, Elena, Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Like, she just kept saying it, like, over and over again. And I was like, something was just like, oh, like, Jesus loves me. And so I I knew that, you know. Yeah. That didn't stop me from being bad, though. (laughs) I was still still having problems, for sure. (laughs) But, Mm -hmm. like, that was my first encounter with kind of the love of God. Mm. That even though... I don't know. Like Even though I, you were being mm-hmm. bad, you you were doing yeah. the wrong thing. Yeah. That someone, the authority figure mm-hmm. in that situation, mm-hmm. didn't just take you out of the room to scold you. Yeah. They took you out of the room to tell you how much God actually does love you, even though you're doing everything that's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Which is like so like antithetical even. Yeah. It's like I, I needed talking to. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. I needed like, what are you doing? You yeah. know? But it was like no, like you, there's something going on, you know, and this mm-hmm. needs like the only real <laughs> solution is the love of Christ. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know, it's just so beautiful. But anyway, did not stop being bad. <laughs> and yeah. like uh, fast forward, I ended up, um, I ended up believing I had a relationship with God. But by the time I was at the end of middle school, I, I barely made it out of middle school without like a mark on my permanent record Mm. for assault Mm -hmm. and so that was kind of the wake-up call of like oh I can't act like this anymore so it it wasn't really like the thing is weird because it's like oh God put me in this scenario that this bad thing happened but also he was preparing me like you know by Literally, I think it was because, like, the man who ran that school was such a follower of God and, like, loved God so much and, like, had so much, like, he knew the grace of God. He he was willing to have grace for me, Mm -hmm. even though, like, you know, like, in a public school, like, that would never happen. It'd be Mm -hmm. like, you literally (laughs) assaulted someone, like, what, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? And so, like, they gave me grace for that because I was, like, truly, like, I've messed up, like, for sure. And my dad's law enforcement, so that mm. was even more like oh, yeah. uh, he was like, I I don't want to like take you to jail someday. Right. And I was right. like, oh my gosh, like I'm on I'm on a really bad course in life. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what happened with that, and the way Christ moved in that, and so that's how I kind of entered high school. Is all of a sudden I wasn't in my little private environment anymore. I went to public high school. Okay. And. I was really under the impression I was like, oh, like me and God are so tight. Like I almost did like a almost 180. I was like, I don't drink. I don't swear. I don't have problems. I go to school and I go home. Like I didn't do it. Like I don't do anything bad, you know, mm-hmm. even though I was still kind of, you know, it's like yeah, you know, yeah. I'll have fallen short of the glory yeah. of God. But I was like, not me though. Like mm-hmm. I'm pretty good. And so... But what I would say is, like, I, me and God are tight. Like, we're really good. We're close. And what that would look like for me in high school was I would talk to God in my head sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh, God, like, this is a pretty good day today. And then I would be like, oh, God, can you help me with this test? And, like, I would literally just talk to him, like, like just like a wall, basically, almost. Like, on my diary. Like, dear diary, today... I talked with my friend and it was really good. (laughs) (laughs) Love Elena. (laughs) And I would go on with my life. (laughs) And I was like, but we're really close, right? 
I mean, mm. got really close. No, <laughs> obviously yeah. not. Now that I look back, but it's hard to be close with someone when mm-hmm. you don't read what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Exactly. Which is what happened when I graduated high school, and yeah. suddenly I'm like, "What do I want in college?" I'm like, "I want like a Christian friend group." That's what I wanted. But, like, my version of Christian friend group was, like, I want to be around people like me. Like, I want to be friends with good people. Mm. Because, like, I'm like I'm pretty good. I want to be around people. Yeah. And so I that was my goal. I was, like, I want to be in a Christian friend group. Like, that's what I want. And then literally, oh, my gosh, this is so sovereign. I'm, like, oh, my gosh, Jesus, you're so good. God is so good. He's working so faithfully in all our lives. Like, that summer between my year of high school mind you this is all in Ames okay because yeah. I was in Boone which is 10 minutes right. from here yeah, not far. I'm in, uh, yeah I went to school names so high school names yeah. so I've been around <laughs> here for a while and so I got a job in Ames as like um I was a pizza maker at Papa John's just for the summer and so I I was making pizzas in Papa John's and it was literally the middle of the day like 11 o'clock like we're never busy like it's totally dead Mm -hmm. and but i'm in the back like we have one pizza and i'm cutting it (laughs) that's the most action we've seen all morning (laughs) (laughs) and so i'm cutting this pizza (laughs) and all like the door the bell rings or whatever and like that's fine and so i just glance up for one second and then i'm like i do a double take i'm like wait a minute like i don't know if it was like i really had struggle with people's like faces but all of a sudden like something flicked in my mind i was like i I know her, and she made eye contact with me. And Mel's laughing. She's like, I know what's going on. <laughs> like, I made eye contact with her. And we were like, oh, my gosh. Like, I know you. And, like, um, girl with blonde hair. And, like, we, we were like, ah, oh, my gosh. And we, like, scream and run into each other. And it's, like, so funny. And my manager's like, um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but we reunite, essentially. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't know your name. But who, for some who is reason... This? This person would end up being April Wigdahl. Oh, yes. this is an April yes, story. It is an April story. Okay. <laughs> I'm so happy that those, like, have its own category. Yeah. Because she is. Oh, my gosh. She is just a light of Christ. Holy cow. But I love her so much. But, yeah. So we end up running into each other. We literally had one class in high school together, freshman year. Oh. One class. It was a Spanish class. And we probably had like three conversations max and not yeah. even conversation like not anything deep it was like oh hi how are you person i don't know your name and then split this was four years later wow and s- i know it was like oh my gosh god like what are the odds of this happening and then we recognize each other it's like whoa because i was yeah it was just crazy and so she we run into each other and she's like oh because it's April, like, she wants to get to know me because she's awesome. She's like, what, like, are your plans for going to college? And I was like, oh, well, I don't know, like, this, that, or the other thing. And I'm going to the design program, and, oh, I'm looking for, like, I think I want to, like, join a Christian group, you know, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, I'm just like, uh. <laughs> And then she's like, oh, her face, just, she's just like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> you, yeah, we are, like, there's this group. It's called CF. Like, we're, like, with on campus, you should come to our Bible study this summer. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Sure. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I've never heard of a Bible study. I've never heard <laughs> of a Bible study. I don't know what a Bible study is. What but is I'm a like, Bible exactly. study? Exactly. I'm like, what is that? But still, I'm like, she knows what I'm talking about, I guess. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> I'm being invited to socialize with people. I'm like, yeah. this is a great opportunity to make connections. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't know. I was just like, wow, what good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> that's what ends up happening. Then I go home and then um, that day comes and I like go to this bible study and i'm feeling well i'm feeling all high and mighty kind of because i'm like i went to the private school and i had a Mm. remember i had a tight relationship with god Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh and then (laughs) what happened was and so i get there and like um i'm like you know we read like the bible passage and i'm like "Mm, mm, yeah that's like really good you know like yeah god is pretty cool you know basically and then like we pray and I'm putting everything I've got into this prayer I'm like yes Lord like yes Jesus amen and you know even though like I genuinely have no idea what I'm talking about Mm -hmm. but it's the pride it's the pride that gets Mm. you and so 
um, but the Lord works in that as well, in that I felt like I was like, oh, this is a cool group of people. Like, I'll, you know, I'll keep coming back because mm-hmm. this can be my end with, like, friends going into college. Right. So when did that all mm-hmm. turn around? It all turned around when when the school year started was kind of like that was the actually the last bible study of the summer so she caught okay. me like right at the right end. at the end exactly yeah. and so when we went into cf it was like one of the like first midweeks first of all i was like bombarded <laughs> by friendly people <laughs> who wanted to get to know me and talk to me which like i kind of found like in my sinful heart i was like just because i didn't my impression of people at that point was, what do you want from me? Mm. Like, what do you want from me? What can you get out of me? Like, how are you trying to use me? Like, why do you want to know so much information about me? You know? Mm -hmm. And like, that's just the hardness that like the devil puts around us though, Mm -hmm. when you're in the world for so long. And that's just. So you had some relational walls. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, but I'm not under that impression at all. I'm just like, this is how people, you know, what do you want? And so. It it was probably by my second or third time going to midweek. I was like, it was probably the second time that I was like having more conversations with people and it just suddenly clicked. I was like, oh, like these people love Jesus. Like they love him. (laughs) Like they are Mm. like in love with Jesus. Like they want to read the Bible and pray with him. And it was specifically April like April knows this, but I'll so I'll just say it. But mm-hmm. I was actually like kind of angry with April. Like I was upset with her because I was like, like, but it was mostly I was upset with God because I came to realization I was like, God, like what the heck? Like wasn't I your faithful servant? Wasn't I your loyal servant? Like I could have left you at any point in high school. I could have ditched you at any point. I could have never talked to you again. I could have rejected religion at any point in time. I've been so loyal, I've been so faithful, but so then why am I sitting here (laughs) in the middle of all these people Mm -hmm. talking to this girl who's, you know, parents are together and like Mm. she's had, she's been homeschooled and had, I feel like this almost like perfect life. And yeah, like she hasn't had the struggles I've had, but she like loves you. And she is your friend and she's your daughter and i was like (laughs) like who am i you know like Mm -hmm. what is happening and so that was um a difficult realization that was a difficult realization but pretty quickly i was like it snapped to from why is this like why me you know to i want that like i want that and I want it mm. so bad. And so I just kept showing up basically because I feel like it was pretty early on. We ended up having um, like a, a midweek maybe where it was like, if you are, you know, maybe it wasn't early on, but it was this idea of like, if when you're in a flock, you know, our enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour. If you're on the edge of the flock or you are straying from the flock or you're off, you know, like, oh, I'll skip midweek this week, but I'll go next week. But then next week rolls around. You're like, I'm the same amount of tired I was last week. And it, you get in the cycle. Mm-hmm. You're a lamb wandering mm. and the devil is around and he's just waiting you know to come Mm. kind of grab at you swipe at you claw at you get you to fall down and so i was like i knew logically i was like i have to keep going i have to keep coming because i something is going to happen i don't know what but maybe like this is what they're doing maybe this is what i have to do so i just kept showing up i kept going even though i was like what is this even doing for me midweeks like you know bible studies sunday i was like okay just keep going and then i went oh my gosh my freshman year i went through so much i was like um i really struggled with evolution Mm -hmm. i was like i literally don't understand evolution (laughs) and i don't claim to understand evolution now but i was like I was, I was so upset. I was like, God, why'd you make this so hard? You know, I'm like, why can't it just be easy? Like, do you even want people to believe in you? Like, man, I was, 
Mm. I was an angry, upset little girl mm. <laughs> in freshman year. Man, I was so bad. Man. I was, yeah, really upset. But but I, I don't know. I just, that was the hard part for me. And now I'm like, if you're a deistic evolutionist or creationist, like, I don't care. Like, yeah, we, yeah. God created it. And that's all that matters to me. Yeah. And, but the thing that was kind of counteracted that was when I encountered the Old Testament prophecies. Oh. When I was like, oh, like, I, I didn't know yeah, the Bible. Yeah. I literally didn't know they existed. Even though I've been to Christian school for seven years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. believe that you're getting a private <laughs> education. You're getting a, you know, Christian, a deep Christian education. But I just, I realized, oh, there are these Old Testament prophecies. This is literally talking about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I, my mind was literally blown out of my school i was yeah, like oh yeah, my yeah. gosh like jesus was foretold jesus is god like oh my gosh and, and then, that he'd be pierced for our transgressions literally and like crushed for our yeah. iniquities i'm like that these his, people would cast lots for exact, his clothes exactly i'm yeah. like how can how could i you know possibly believe that like it's kind of like this is a this is no military general mm-hmm. this is like the humble king i yeah. was like whoa yeah and so, yeah. So all this was happening freshman year. Yeah, that was yeah. all. That was a lot freshman year because I was also like, what is translation? Like, do we yeah, even have yeah. the original thing? Seems like you just like know. were like, your brain was literally, probably exploding a little literally, bit. Literally, like, I felt like my brain was on fire like 24/7. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. was inundated with so much information and false information that I had believed. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't. That was what the time I learned that divorce was in the Bible. Right. Right. Which was obviously like kind of like. I can't even describe my reaction. I was like, yeah. what? No, you're, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I read it. I was like, oh my gosh. That's it's what amazing <laughs> what you learn when you read. Literally. <laughs> yes. It <laughs> is amazing what happens when you actually read the source yeah. material. <laughs> Crazy. So, so in that, yeah. so with, with that time then mm-hmm. with, um, with April at midweek, mm-hmm. realizing like you were probably not a child of God, but mm-hmm. she was. Yeah. Was it that night that that's how you came to know Christ? Or I would say all this that, kind of happened yeah, after? Was, or is this all kind of jumbled up, mm-hmm. all mixed up together, all kind of happened freshman no, year? that's a very good question. I would say that was the night I was basically like, I want that. And yeah. maybe that could have been at the point like I was saved. Yeah. Because even though like all these stumbling blocks came to me, I felt mm-hmm. like that like the evolution and translation and what it's in Greek. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> um, yeah. It was like all those things. Like, like I, I prayed through it and I was like, God, if you're real, then you're real. But if you're not like, then you're not like, I really need, but I need you to be clear. Like mm. I need you to be clear. Mm-hmm. And he just worked me through that. And I got to the other end and I was like, okay, like, I believe, you know, like it was about like t- maybe towards the end of my freshman year, I was like, okay, Jesus is my savior. He loves me. Like, and that, like, I'm all in, you know, yeah. was basically how it was. And that was hard too because I had yeah. a lot of sin in my life. I was like, yeah, wrestling through. And yeah, so. That's good. It, that reminds me of, um, it says in Hebrews that faith comes through hearing mm. and hearing through the word of Christ. Mm. And it's like, yeah, like, you know, having a general belief in God is not good enough that we need to vi- the very words of Christ mm. to know how what we should believe and to be able to believe. And I think that's your, your testimony just kind of is a witness of that. Of like, oh, as soon as I started hearing his word. Yeah, like, literally. I was like, like <laughs> it started to reach down deep in my soul. Yeah. And I saw the wrongness and I saw his beauty. And I know. So it, that's it literally so cool. was like, oh, my gosh, how you describe it. It's like, Christ is so beautiful. And he's so much, like, bigger than us. And it's like, yeah. he literally, like, it was part of the realization of, like, one of the things that, like, really convicted me. It was when it, someone was like, like I put Jesus on the cross. Mm. I was like, if I, I suddenly realized, I was like, if I was the only person on earth, Christ would have still gone to that cross. Mm. If I was the yeah. only person on earth, he still would have, like my sin would have still put him on the cross and he still mm. would have done it for me. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't like the trolley problem, like, oh, there's not enough people <laughs> to die. You know? yeah, it was yeah. like, I love Elena. I want to pursue Elena. I want her to come to me. I want unity. Yeah. And... So I will die and I'll give up my life for her. And it's like, if he gave up everything for me, like, how can I not give up everything for him? Amen. So, yeah, that was basically 
the journey we're on now yeah. and I'm so in love with Christ and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> no, that is <laughs> and awesome. And he's changed my life. That is really better. great. I'm, I'm really glad to hear mm-hmm. that. So, uh, so shout out to all the people mm-hmm. at Iowa State. Um, For sure. You know, and we just really encourage all of, uh, all of you guys listening to uh, get involved, get, invo- get involved in a student group in um, in a Christian student group, in a campus group, in a small group of theirs. Um, if you're part of the campus fellowship or there's a campus fellowship near you, uh, we encourage you to check it out. Um, yeah, so, and also, yeah. sorry to jump yeah, in, yeah. keep going. Yes. Keep going yes. because you yeah. will not regret it. Christ <laughs> will work it. He will come to your life. He will work. Amen. It's not in vain. God loves you. You just need to keep showing up. I know how hard it is. Trust me. (laughs) It's like, what am I doing it for? You're doing it for him. And you're doing it for you as well. So keep going. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Elena, for Mm -hmm. joining us. And listeners, if you found this encouraging, please subscribe. Give us a rating on your podcast app. And don't waste your time. Get involved in a campus ministry today. Amen.